Today, Jesus teaches us how to return to intimacy. We hear this gospel passage today that we commonly call the road to Emmaus, in which two of Jesus' disciples are walking away from Jerusalem on the day of the resurrection because they don't yet believe. And they're walking back home. One of them was name was Cleopas. And we know that his wife's name was Mary, and we presume that that's who was with him. Mary, who was one of the most faithful disciples, she was the one who was at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene. She saw the whole thing. She was probably traumatized. And it says now they're walking away from Jerusalem. They're going back home. And while they're on the way, they're discussing their life with Jesus. And Jesus, in the, in the midst of that, Jesus shows up. It reminds me of, the, of the, the passage in which Jesus says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be with them. And so they're discussing that. They don't yet recognize that it is Jesus in his glorified body. They can't, they're kept from seeing him. But he allows them to air their grievances. He asks them questions. He plays dumb so that they can get out their frustrations. And they start to talk about how, how frustrated they were that they thought he was the one and they had followed him. They'd given their life to him. And at that, Jesus gives them the spiritual intimacy, the intellectual intimacy that they need. It says that he starts to break open the scriptures and explain all the prophets and to reassure them that they were actually right in their belief. Wouldn't you like to know those scriptures? Wouldn't you like to know what Jesus showed them? We don't have to guess too much because we know a lot of those scriptures of the Old Testament. I wonder if he broke open for them uh, Isaiah chapter 7, in which it says that, Behold, there will be a virgin who will conceive and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And he would say, don't you remember that, that, that Jesus was born of a virgin? And he claimed to be God. That's who he said he was. He was the son of God. Or maybe he broke open to them 2 Samuel chapter 7, which Samuel says, there will be a king who will sit on the throne of David forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Didn't Jesus always talk about his kingdom? How he was preparing a kingdom for them? And he said he was coming from his father and of his kingdom, there will be no end. He's going to open up heaven for us. Maybe he broke open... Isaiah chapter 53, in which he, he described how, how by his wounds, we would be healed. He would be wounded for our transgressions. Don't they remember that, that Jesus said that all along? I'm going to sacrifice. This is my body. This is my blood. It's going to be given up for you. Maybe he opened to them Psalm 22. That they will, they will attack me and bruise me like a pack of dogs. They will pierce my hands and my feet. Isn't that what they witnessed? The soldiers who, who treated him, they were savage. They treated him like a beast. And they bruised him and they pierced his hands and his feet. All of these scriptures and Jesus is just breaking it open and saying, don't you know that all these prophecies of the Old Testament came true in this man, Jesus, whom you followed? And it says that at that time, that they're in the midst of intellectual intimacy with Jesus, that their hearts burn within them. Now they have emotional intimacy with this man. Their hearts are burning within them. And so they, it, it prompts them to invite him in. Now we want your physical presence with us. They invite him in for dinner and they say, stay with us. And at that moment, Jesus takes them even to a deeper level, sacramental intimacy. It says he breaks the bread with them. He celebrates the Eucharist right there. And it says at that moment, their eyes were open and then they see him. At that moment, when they see his physical intimacy with them, it says that Jesus leaves them. Why would he do that? Perhaps to return to the heights of intimacy, to show them that you weren't made just for physical intimacy. And I'm not staying here with you forever in my physical intimacy. And so he disappears to remind them that spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, he will be with them always. Sacramentally, he will be with them always. And so he reminds them of all those things. Y'all today, as we reflect on our relationship with Jesus, maybe we're downcast. Maybe we're the ones walking away from Jerusalem. Maybe you won't even want to take a walk today. It looks like the rain's done for the day. Get outside, take a walk. Air your frustrations to Jesus. He can handle it. Maybe you take someone with you. You discuss all of your hopes, your dreams, all of those things, the plans that you had for this year. Maybe you remember the faith that you have in Jesus, all the good things that he has done for you, all the ways that you've walked with him until this point. Maybe you even ask him for reassurance. Break open your scriptures. Allow your hearts to burn within you. Long for that day in which we share the Eucharist together again, the breaking of the bread, and we will see him face to face. But have no fear today. And as you walk with Jesus, he is with you. Whenever two or three are gathered in his name, he's going to be in our midst. He'll always be with us. He won't abandon us. His promises are true. 